What's up, guys? Good morning. Roosevelt, Utah. It was an early morning for me. I didn't really do much of an intro, so this is going to be the intro. We just got here. Um, got to move Fancy Hawk a little bit because he's got to get both sides, so I'm a little bit over too far. Um, and yeah, we're going to untarp this and get it off the truck, and then we're going to get a reload, which is in... Um, Tuella, Utah. So yeah, let's get to work. And just like that, one by one, and we'll be almost done. What's up, guys? So it's the start of a new day. I am preparing breakfast. I want to show you guys these eggs. These eggs are amazing. I know this is a trucking channel, but I mean, these are just like the prettiest store-bought eggs ever, aren't they? Anyhow, Martin has offloaded in uh, Utah. So I have to submit those bills to our factoring company uh, so we can get paid. Uh, so I figured this is an excellent time to talk factoring with you guys. All right, so we're gonna go here to our rate confirmations not paid. I'm gonna pull out the one here for TQL. Got our bill ladings. Let's go take the stuff to scan it and get submitted. Anyway, one practice I like to do every single time I factor a load is I like to keep really good records. So part of that is I put a note here uh, with the date that I submitted it for factoring. And then I'll also put another note for the date that it was paid uh, that way. So if I need to babysit the broker to make sure they're paying the factoring company, I know exactly when we submitted it, when it was paid out, so I can keep track of the invoices at ages. All right, guys, so one of the reasons why it's so important to keep track of these invoices and when you factor them is because there's a little known fact in the trucking industry just because you factor the load does not mean you're not responsible for it there on out a lot of people think because factoring companies say that they're non-recourse that that means that they're in the free and clear if they sell the invoice to the factoring company but that is not the case that is usually only the case if the broker fails to pay, and then files for bankruptcy. That is the only way you guys are protected if you're under a non-recourse contract with pretty much every factoring company that's in the trucking industry because I have shopped around a lot of factoring companies over the years. They all have this in the fine print. Look at your contracts if you don't believe me. So what happens otherwise is if a broker goes out, you know, reaching that, you know, 90 day mark, the factoring company is actually going to charge you back uh, the invoice and they're going to take it out of your funds uh, for future loads that you're factoring because they assume, you know, you're regularly factoring loads. So if you have a broker, let's call him Joe Schmo Trucking Group, and he doesn't pay and it's like 108 days and he hasn't paid. The factoring company decides to charge you back. And let's say the invoice was for, oh, I don't know, $8,500 because let's pretend it was rates from last summer when the market was really, really hot and he has not paid you. That's going to be a major hit on your wallet. All right. So a lot of you guys might be like, well, no big deal because I'll just go collect his bond. Well, you might not be able to collect on that broker's bond. And I'm gonna tell you why. So let's say you have this $8,500 load 
and your factoring company has kicked it back to you and you're getting ready to file on that broker's bond. Well, brokers usually are required, I believe it's $75,000 to have for their bond. How many people do you think that have hauled, you know, $8,500 loads at last summer's rates that maybe did not get paid will it take to drain that bond? Uh, I'm thinking probably about like eight or nine people. Um, you know, if it's people that were hauling for even more and are owed more, that bond, it's, it's going to go quick is basically the point. So just because you can go after the bond, it might not be there by the time you get your charge back from the factoring company. So really, really, really important to start watching these invoices. All the factoring companies, they all pretty much have a portal set up. You can watch your invoices as they're aging. Once you get to a certain point, be it 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, the factory company is going to be calling that broker to collect payment, but you as the carrier, you also need to be calling that broker to collect payment because ultimately it's going to fall back on you guys. And just like there's no guarantees in life, there's no guarantees in trucking. And times were good. Everyone thought, oh, this is the new normal. And it's not. And a lot of brokers burned a lot of people with these high rates and they did not pay them. And a lot of people were left with nothing in their hands to show for it. You gotta babysit these things, guys. Just because you're factoring does not mean you're in the clear. Yes, I know my desk is a mess because I'm in the middle of filing today. And no, we have never been burned by a broker. Um, we got close a lot of years ago. I had to be incredibly persistent and it was over the stupidest load dollar amount ever too because it's like literally at that time, I think it was like a $500 load. It was nothing and it took them, I feel like four or five months to pay us that because I didn't, I didn't factor that load. I know if I would have, I would have been charged back on it, but because the amount was so small at the time, I just carried it myself and we got almost burned on it. I had to be really persistent and call the owner even. And finally, finally then they paid us for it. So, you know, you just gotta, you gotta check all the boxes and really keep tabs on these things. So like I said, that's, that's why I try to have a really good filing system. I write down, you know, the dates. That way, when I go in, and I like to do this when I'm factoring loads, usually on a weekly basis, I'll go into my portal, and I'm going to watch these invoices as they age. So this one right here is from TQL. I've never had a problem with TQL paying us in the past. Um, I know some reefer people have had problems with TQL uh, because of damaged produce, things like that. But as far as flatbeds go, when we worked with them in the past, we've never had a problem. So I'm not too worried about this one. Uh, but it was if it was a company I've never done business before, you bet your dollar I'm going to be watching that invoice. Do you guys know that Roosevelt, or is it Roosevelt, Utah? Because there's two O's. It's the energy capital of Utah, and it shows because that's where all these tankers are coming out of, these double tankers that are running all this heavy stuff. I did not know, but the sign told me so when I entered the city. Well, we got that kicked off. It was a little bit of work. I never want to do a lot of work first thing in the morning. And for the folding tarps, man, that's like the worst part of it, I think. Folding tarps. I don't mind tarping. I, I, I think folding them and putting them away is a bigger pain than the ass than anything. But we're gonna go grab a reload. It's out of Tuella, Tuelli. I'm gonna say it as Tuelli. I don't care what the locals call it. It's uh, actually, for once we get a break. No tarp and very light. We're gonna pick up some insulation. The only thing I'm not really a fan of is it's a really tall load, so it's just a drag, but it's light, so. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Should be there around, you know, Probably a little after one o'clock local time. Hopefully it won't take too long to load it. I get loaded and I'm probably gonna take a nap because I'm freaking tired. I didn't really sleep well last night. 
But such is such life and such is trucking. Look at that, it's a superstar. It's Dooner Livingstone. Well, I'll be. Look at our big old load of insulation. This guy keeps freaking moving. Well, I guess it's not gonna move anymore. We broke it. I had to stop and tighten these old straps. Because that wind was blowing so sideways that this whole thing was like that. Sorry I didn't film much of this when I was loading. Actually, I didn't film any of it. But that's because I met a YouTube celebrity. Good old Mr. Dooner Livingstone. And we got the chit-chatting, and that's just how it went. So, but there's our load. It's riding okay now. Except this guy over here. This guy is being annoying. No, it's all right. It's just, it's a double stack, so that's why it's all right. But these, these single stacks, see, if those start moving on you, then that's no fun. But we're good. Let's go get some food. I'm starving. Man, what the hell? That's what happens when you're in a hurry. Well, I wouldn't say hurry, but 
not paying attention. I didn't pull up far enough. You get over here and it's like, what in tarnation? That's not good. But there's not really nothing, anything we can do about it. Freaking wind, man. Just destroyed it. Well, there's lines there. <clears throat> I guess the king, he must not know about them. Hmm. Maybe he just doesn't want his really nice, real nice trailer scratched. Like some of the guys that drive these exotic cars. They take up two parking spots. Oh. Our load's still riding good. That tear's there. It's going to get worse, but eh, it's whatever at this point. There's nothing we can do about it. Hopefully that parking heater stays on tonight. It'd be nice. Oh, let's go in the truck. It's cold out here. Oh, man. Today was a good, productive day of work. As Finnegan would say it, it was the best day at work ever. Actually, it wasn't bad because I got to meet Dooner in person. That was pretty cool. It was good hanging out with you, man, if you're watching this. Thanks for the dunnage again, the 4x4s. Four four I'll come in handy for sure. But yeah, it was a fun day. Made some miles. We're in Winnemucca, Nevada. Oh, going to go to bed. Man, I gotta do something about that parking heater. I, I don't think it's the parking. I, I don't think it's the heater itself. I think it's the thermostat. It acts up. I reset it a couple times. Then it'll work. I don't know. Maybe I gotta clean it. I should order a rebuild kit for it and just go through it. But anyway, yeah, yeah, we're in Winnemucca. Um, gonna go go to gonna go to bed and then I'm gonna get up probably about five in the morning when we get our hours back and truck it on in into San Leandro we're about six and a half hours I'd say from here maybe a little bit more maybe about seven so that's why I want to get up about five because they'll put us in there around <clears throat> what like one yeah roughly around one they're open till three so, it'd be nice to get this unloaded and get have the truck available if something pops up on Thursday, maybe. Something local sweet we can do, because I want to be home on Friday to wash this truck, because on Saturday we're going to this thing called Meet the Machines for the Kids, and we're taking fancy, and and actually I named the trailer, I'm calling the trailer Rusty. There's a reason for that. It's fancy and rusty. But, uh, I don't know, the heater's still working. I think it just started, I think it just decided to chill out. But anyway, I'm rambling. I got nothing to really talk about. So, yeah, it was a, it was a fun-filled day of trucking. Nice, nice change of pace hauling this light load. Although, it was pretty damn windy. This weighs like 7,000 pounds, and it's really tall. So when the wind hit me on the salt flats, <laughs> it was fun. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm... Uh, like 30,500 pounds with I'd say almost full of fuel <clears throat> so call it maybe 38,000 pound gross right now we're like almost like a like a large car with an empty reefer is what we're what we're weighing with this load so we're fairly light so yeah it uh the wind was fun and then it was off and on through Nevada. It was just annoying. Just didn't know what, which way I wanted to blow. You know, causing fuel, ca ca just sucking fuel out of the tanks is what it's doing. So yeah, all right, I'm done rambling. You guys probably don't want to hear any of this crap anyway. So <clears throat> we'll pick this back up in the morning. I wonder what Alice is doing. I bet I know what she's doing. She's probably sleeping already. 
and that woman goes to bed and she wants to go to bed she's out like that she, she falls asleep in a second but, all right i'll catch you guys in the morning thanks for watching like and subscribe all that youtuber jazz or don't doesn't bother me none I just drive a truck. My wife YouTubes. No. I shouldn't say that. Now she's going to be mad. No, she won't. Maybe she will. I guess I'll find out when she watches this. Toodles. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and I get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bike, yeah, get the Alice! 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 What the fuck, Chuck?